So first we need to talk about attachment map. So recap of attachment map. So attachment map is a way of constructing xn from xn minus 1 by attaching the boundary to xn minus 1. So let us make this more clear. So you first take the disjoint union of xn minus 1 and the n disk to construct xn. And then you take a point in the boundary of the disk and identify it with the attachment map. So I will repeat it again. What you do is you basically take a point in the boundary of the disk and attach it to xn minus 1. So you take the point in the boundary of the disk and attach it to xn minus 1. So in other words, the boundary of the disk sn minus 1 is identified with xn minus 1. This is a hand waving definition. It will be more clear once we see these examples. So let us start with the first and the simplest example of a sphere. So I'm going to write S2 here. So S2 consists of only two cells. There is a zero cell and there is a two cell. So xn minus one, if we consider, consider S2 as xn, then xn minus one is just E0. So attachment map is S1 to xn minus one, which is E0 here. Okay, so how does it look like? So since we are constructing S2, we have dimension 2, so we need to start with D2. So D2 is this disk. Yeah, this disk has a boundary. So this boundary of the disk is S1. Okay, so E0 is this point in pink. So we identify a boundary with the point. What do we get? We get a sphere and that is E2, a 2 cell and this E0. So we get E0 and E2. Okay, so we can generalize this construction to construct Sn. Sn consists of two cells E0 and En. So Xn minus 1 is always E0. And this attachment map, see, notice also that attachment map is to a single point E0. So it has to be a constant map. If you're mapping everything to a point, that means it's a constant. Yeah, I will make it clear that E0 is nothing but Xn minus 1. And Sn is what we want to construct, which is Xn. So again, this is the boundary of the disk. And it is the boundary of the disk is identified with E0. Now let us, uh, obviously S1 would again be E0 and E1, so similar way, yeah. But now, now I want to construct S0, S1, S2 inductively, yeah. So S0 should be given to us, S1, S2 or S2 s3 s4 to s infinite we can construct by using a new method so this is a different cw complex and it has a different attachment map so let us start with d1 that is a line so this line has two ends as it as its boundary points yeah this is a boundary point this is the boundary point S0 is the boundary point. I should write line only as D rather than D1. Yeah, so what is S1? So you start with S0, that is the equator of S1. Yeah, and then you attach two arcs to it, that is the two circles you attach to it, left side and right side. So these two arcs are obtained from S1 minus S0. Yeah, from circle, you take two points out, you get two arcs, and these two arcs, you combine it back to S0. So let us write it down. Yeah, so S1 minus S0 is two arcs. So it is E1, union E1, that is two one cells. And S0 we have seen is just two zero cells. Okay, what is S2? Same procedure, you first write the equator 
that is S1 and then you have two two cells so two two cells are the upper hemisphere and the lower hemisphere and you know you can flatten down the hemisphere into a disc so it is a two cell so we have this upper hemisphere and a lower hemisphere So now let us let us write this down. What does S2 consist of? So it consists of the hemisphere and the equator. This is two two cells. Then we just write what S1 is from the above. So we are we have an inductive construction. So we can also construct Sn like this, which will consist of 2n cells and 2n minus 1 cells and so on so so on to s infinite now i want to point out a crucial difference between the first example and the second example so in the first example s2 does not contain s1 because s1 has a cell called e1 and s2 has a cell e0 and e2 so e1 is not in s2 there is the second construction s1 is naturally occurring in s2 so you can see S2 contains the equator. So you see that this union is occurring in this part. Now let us use the second construction to construct the projective space. Okay, what is the projective space going to be? You start with RPN is what you want to construct. So RPN is constructed by identifying the antipodal points that is the two hemispheres are identified together so notice that we are just identifying the upper hemisphere with the bottom so these two are identified so that is what we get en union en minus 1 e1 and e0 cpn is nothing but only even dimensions because complex plane is r2 so e2 union E0. To make ideas more clear, let us write down what Sn exactly is. So Sn is 2n cells, then 2n minus 1 cells, so on to 2 1 cells and 2 0 cells identify the antipodal points these two are identified these two these two and this gives us rpn 